If you want to go from broke to rich and noob to pro, stick around for these 25 Minecraft tips that will help you achieve it. And hey, since you're already here, hit like, subscribe and let me know which one of these you didn't know in the comments below. One thing that is keeping you broke is the way you manage your inventory when caving and mining. You see, instead of using the fortune pickaxe and holding all that extra ore, why not use a silk touch pickaxe to gather all the blocks and once you're in the safety of your home, you can reap the rewards of your exploits. Enderman, these slippery arrow avoiding water hating creatures can be a rather tricky foe. With the ability to teleport at will, you never know where their strike will come from, but there is one way to outsmart them, you see. When they come charging at you, just plop a boat in front of them and watch them be confused at what befell them. Getting food early in game is crucial, but sometimes it feels like crops just take forever to grow. Believe it or not, there is a way to speed this up without using bone meal though. Just take a look at how villagers plant their crops. Alternating them in rows will make them grow much faster. Apparently, the villagers know something else besides sleeping. So, you've got yourself a huge project that requires lots of aged copper. But it seems like the aging isn't taking place, right? Same as in the real world, copper oxidizes in touch with air. So the best layout for oxidizing copper blocks actually is with four blocks of space between them. If you ever stumble upon a mushroom island, take one of those mushrooms home with you at all costs. It may not give you milk, but it will give you mushrooms too. Yay to infinite food source! Now, the chances for this to happen are really really low, but technically you can run out of naturally spawned diamonds in your world. One way to slow this down is to get all your diamond gear from villagers. Just don't ask where they get their diamonds from. Cooking food always feels like a hassle. You don't get much experience from it and you're burning valuable fuel, but you still need it. Well, if you're in a hurry for a quick snack, put some meat or potatoes on a campfire and in basically the same amount of time, you'll get four pieces of food instead of one. And the best part is, the campfire never burns out. Did you know that you don't need a diamond pickaxe to make a nether portal? That's right, you can visit the nether long before you ever see diamonds. All you'll need is a lava pool, a water bucket and a flint and steel to light up the magical gateway, making all of its horrors and treasures available early game. Although gold is worth more than iron in the real world, in the world of Minecraft it's quite the opposite. Not only is the durability of golden items almost non-existent, but you also can't collect any ore above gold tier or quartz with the pickaxe. The only thing they're useful for is distracting the piglins. No wonder these yellow color tools and gear are sometimes called butter instead of gold. Do you feel like your farm doesn't produce enough carrots and potatoes? Do you want to have enough seeds so that your chickens never have to fear if they'll have enough food? Well, then the fortune enchantment is the one that you want. Best thing is, any tool that has it can be used to get more produce. I bet you never thought you'd be farming with the same pickaxe you use for mining. Sometimes the pillager patrols are simply annoying and starting a raid accidentally is not fun. In order to get rid of their captain without killing him yourself is quite easy actually. All you need to do is lure him to the front and stand in such a way that the pillagers fire their crossbows at him. They're not the best shots you see. Or if that proves to be difficult for you, you can always light the captain on fire. One of the essential blocks for decoration is definitely a leaf block. From creating beautiful gardens to having amazing custom trees, you might need a lot of leaves and the shears just won't cut it. Try using an efficiency and silk touch hoe instead. It will make your life so much easier and after getting this hoe, you'll never look at your shears the same way again. Using coal as fuel may be acceptable in the beginning, but what you really should be doing is switching to lava as soon as possible. You see, one coal can smelt 8 items, which is 80 seconds of usage time. The lava bucket lasts for a thousand seconds. Added benefit is that you won't have to worry about the world pollution. Ta-da! Suspicious twos are basically free potions. Depending on a flower you use, you can get different effects, like fire resistance for example. Now, if you don't want to experiment yourself, there are recipes available so you don't accidentally poison yourself. 
If you need a lot of iron, keep an eye out for tough patches and deep caves. What you see before you is a vein of iron which can hold more than a stack of it. And if you use the first tip from this video, you will be able to carry much more before you have to resurface. Did you ever wonder how do iron golems spawn? You see, once the villagers get scared of the undead that are chasing them, they are able to summon a mighty protector in the form of an iron golem. So why not use this to your advantage and make an iron farm for yourself? Everybody needs a passive income on the side, right? With the new caves and caverns being super huge and super deep, caving is more dangerous than ever. I, however, have a tip for you that can save you a lot of trouble. The world is full of temples, shipwrecks and buried treasures that can give you a huge upgrade very early in the game, making your journeys below ground a lot safer. One mistake that everybody makes is throwing away their first tools. If you made a full set of wooden tools before they break, keep them around, they can be used as fuel. They may not burn for long you see, but sometimes a few extra seconds of heat is exactly what you need to save your life. Netherite gear, the best gear you can possibly get in a game. Thanks to the smithing table mechanic, you can now acquire it much faster and cheaper than crafting it like any other gear. But be warned, you want to do all of your enchanting before you make an upgrade. Otherwise, the costs of enchantment will be astronomical. Oh, lives in the rivers and under the sea. Only the best starting food in the game. Salmon. You can literally find it everywhere and they also respawn fairly quickly, making it the perfect starter food source. You see, in the nether, one block traveled equals 8 in the overworld, making it the perfect shortcut. But the nether isn't very easy to traverse. Luckily, there is a way to get up and above the bedrock level, which is perfect, as no mobs spawn down there. Now, don't get me wrong, it still isn't a wormhole or warp drive, but it's as close as we can get. Have you ever wanted to create your own village or a trading post? Well, the igloo is the best way to go about it. It has a villager, a zombie villager and everything you need to cure one, even if you just enter the game. This makes it a perfect place to start your own colony, just the way you want it. When you heal a zombie villager, you will notice that the prices he gives you are discounted. Now, what if I told you that we can make the discount even better? The way to go about this is curing a zombie villager, then infecting him again, and then repeating the process until you get all the items, basically for free. If you put a Riptide enchantment on a trident, while you're underwater you can literally fly through the ocean. You can harvest the power of Riptide, even on land. Just make sure you don't go too high up, because if the rain suddenly stops, you'll have a sudden date with Mother Earth. 